Um, Neil deGrasse Tyson is arguably one of the smartest people on the planet. I, uh, I simply adore the man, his work on promoting science and, and, and reason and critical thinking. It's simply amazing. There, there's, um, there's no comparison to anybody else. Um, which, which makes it that much harder to um, listen to some of his comments on atheism. Uh, for some reason, he is um, a, appears to be uh, terrified of the word. Um, I've already made a video about his justification um, of why the label does not apply to him and he made quite a few logical fallacies um, in that explanation which is which is confusing and surprising um, in this video he talks about science and faith and answers the question does religion have an inherent conflict with science to which the answer is an unquestionable and huge absolute yes about that at the end, but let, let's see what he says. Most religious people in America fully embrace science. So the, the argument that religion has some issue with science applies to a small fraction of those who declare that they are religious. Um, the question is not whether religious people have a problem with science, but whether religion and science are, are, are in conflict, whether there's an inherent conflict there. So, talking about religious people who accept science is simply a non sequitur. It just, that just does not follow. Um, and I am amazed that Neil does not know about compartmentalization. I did it in the first try. So, um, which particularly applies here um, to people who um, are religious and accept science. Uh, compartmentalization is a ver very well-known psychological phenomenon whereby people hold conflicting and um, opposite uh, beliefs at the same time um, and manage to do that. So when a scientist who is religious goes into his science lab, he doesn't bring religion with him. Um, so religion is not a factor in his science work, and vice versa, when he goes to church, uh, or whatever, temple, he doesn't bring his science and logical reasoning into the church. This is a very well-known phenomenon, and I, I simply cannot believe that, that Neil doesn't know this. They just happen to be a very vocal fraction, so you get the impression that there's more of them than there actually is. It's actually the minority of religious people who reject science or feel threatened by it or or want to sort of undo or, or, or restrict the, where science can go. Um, again, um, the, let's... The rest. I'm trying to find a pause where he doesn't look um, funny. Sorry, Neil. Um, again, compartmentalization, what religious people accept or not accept is irrelevant for the, for the question. Um, Let's 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 move on to the next. That's true. There's been there's been a happy coexistence for centuries, and for that to change now would be would be unfortunate, because I I've seen this happen in other nations and other states, where the consequences are that you just basically recede back to the cave, because that's where you land, when you undermine, the scientific and technological innovations that come about when you're a properly trained, trained scientist or technologist. So here we're switching the subject altogether now. Um, yes, that is true. If, if you allow religion to interfere, you're going back to the Dark Ages. So let's not allow religion to interfere. But that's not, again, not the question. Um, let, let's continue. Well, here, I mean, it, it seems like Neil is trying to say that there is no... Um, conflict between religion and science because he is afraid that religion will negatively affect science. Now, now that that fear is justified, but I don't think 
it's a reason to falsely claim that religion is there is no inherent conflict between religion and science. Consider also that in America, forty percent of American scientists are religious. So this notion that there's some that if you're a scientist, you're an atheist, or if you're religious, you're not a scientist, that's just empirically false. It's an empirically false statement. Um, hmm. Again, compartmentalization, we're going back to the same thing, but the, the statement, if you're religious, you're an atheist, I'm sorry, <laughs> that was, well, if you're a scientist, you're an atheist, means that literally, if you're a scientist, in every aspect of your life, you cannot be religious. Atheism is the scientific position on the question of God's existence. That's simply a scientific solution. There is no, there's no, there's not a single shred of evidence that points to anything supernatural existing, to, to, to the supernatural, let alone to something as specific as God. And so the scientific conclusion to that is to not believe that it, it does exist. Atheism is not the claim that God does not exist. Atheism is the rejection of the opposite claim that God does exist because there's no evidence. That's a scientific position on the question of God's existence. So if you are an, a scientist fully from, from start to finish in every aspect of your life, you cannot be religious. That's what that means. And now the fact that there are scientists, like you say, like Neil says, sorry, 40% of them who are religious, simply shows that those people are capable of, of holding conflicting beliefs. That, that's all it means. Let, let's just finish here. So, uh, well, there are plenty of atheists who are scientists or not scientists. To paint this as some built-in conflict is... There may be a conflict, but many, plenty of people in this country coexist in both worlds. And that's the point. Exactly there. There may be a conflict. So he, he, he's aware that there may be a conflict between religion and science, because there is a conflict between religion and science. And here's why. Science is a method of, 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 of explaining the world around us. And it is based on doubt. It is based on constantly trying to prove that what you think is right is wrong. Constantly trying to, 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 to prove yourself or itself, let's, let's say, even though science is not an entity, but let's say, wrong. All the scientific theories are being questioned and tested and retested and, and people are trying to prove them wrong. That, that's what science is. That's the strength of science. On the other hand, you have religion, which is based on dogma, which is the exact opposite. It is the rejection of questioning. It, is the, it, it, it forbids questioning. It demands that you accept dogmas as some idiots 2,000 years ago wrote them down or said them or whatever without question. Those are the exact opposites. And they are conflicting because they are opposite. One demands doubt. One Forbids doubt. These things are the negative of each other. That's why they are in conflict. You either accept something on blind, stupid faith, or you question it and you examine it and you try to, to prove it wrong and see that it, it is whether it really is right or not. On the other side, on the religious side, you simply blindly accept it, no matter how stupid or ridiculous it is. So, I'm sorry, Neil. But science and faith are the exact opposites. And that's why they are in conflict. There's an inherent conflict because of those two systems of trying to explain the world around us. And you should know this.